Hello, and welcome back to the Colorado Color Company YouTube channel. Today we're going to be assembling the spoon pipe with horn. Here's a piece I prepped in the prior video. So what I'm going to do is just add a handle here. I'm plugging the end of the blow tube with a earplug. You can use a cork. People use silly putty, just as long as you get a seal so you can get some air pressure in there. So I'm going to flare out this blow tube. Don't always have to use the jacks here. I'm going to use a piece of graphite, which works, works pretty good too. of my heat into this piece of timber tubing. There's a little nub from where it was cut. I'm just going to even it out with the shears. I don't like these little cut pieces on my bench, so I pick it up, throw it in the knockoff pot, and I'm back into the seal here. So again, I'm putting most of my heat into this piece of timber because it's thicker and larger and less heat into the handle I'm going to attach. As you can see there, that end of the piece of timber is pretty ripping. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out down into about a little 12-7 size so that there's no clear in my mouthpiece. There you can see that I've pulled it down and now I have a little waste piece of timber that's not going to be included in the pipe, but it'll ensure that you don't get any clear in your mouthpiece. So now I'm just building in my heat for the stretch. On the GTT, I'm flipping back and forth between the Lynx flame and the Mirage flame. Once I feel like I got enough heat in there, I go for a little stretch. And once it's stretched, I put it in the roller may have gone a little early there looking back. Probably would have rolled that out in my hands just a little bit longer, but you know, they say it's an art, not a science. And here I'm just using the roller to straighten out that stretch. in the camera make sure everything's in frame <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna start my shape of my bowl not gonna go all the way around just gonna you know break that factory wall weight into a little football shape and kind of start start forming the ball set the shape. I'm going to remove the, the original handle. And then I'm going to clean up the end here where it was attached. I'm using a little 6 mil to do a pick and roll here. Where you just pick the glass off, roll the 6 mil, collect the waste glass you don't want on the piece you're working on. And I moved my knockoff pot for this video, so you might see me changing hands. Normally it would be right where the camera is, and I would just take my left hand and tap it off. Oops, see, look, I went for it and it wasn't there. <laughs> So now I'm going to continue sh slowly shaping this into the this form where I will then add the Encalmo ball to the front of it. I'm never going all the way in one heat all the way around. Little movements, little puffs, you don't want to go too far. So I'm just doing little adjustments and there you can 
see I got it pretty close to where I want it. It's looking pretty good in my hand, but when we throw it on the roller, you can see there's a little wobble to it. So I'm just going to straighten out that ball even further. And you can see again how much that roller shows everything. But as far as straight goes, that's looking pretty good. Here's a little trick. Works really good for popping holes on center with a Smith torch. So I'm shooting my flame across the front, past the piece. I'm not coming in directly into it. I'm heating just the front and I'm attached with the blow hose and you blow a hole perfectly out on center. It's a great way to get a centered hole centered to your handle. So here I'm going to open it up. The hole's small so I'm going to start by using one side of the jacks. And as the hole progressively gets larger, I'm going to use both tips of the jacks to get in there and open it up. And the angle is important here. You can see how I'm going up and kind of pushing the inside wall out. There what I'm doing is I'm using the, the hole in the jacks as a reference of size to the hole. I like the hole to be about the size of a dime roughly or the inside of the little spring bend on the flame working jacks is a good reference to get close. And I also did the same thing on this wigwag ball I pre-prepped, and you can see they came out really close together, which is gonna make for a really nice and calm up. It is very important that those holes are the same size and stick together perfectly. So now I'm going to add most of my heat into the larger side because that's going to take longer to get hot. The wigwag ball is going to catch a lot of residual heat from heating up that larger side. Also the larger side is going to have to open more so I want that to be hotter so it's going to open wider and accept that wigwag ball. There. I'm never going all the way in one shot. <clears throat> little little steps, little motions, little heats. They're easy to come back from and easy to adjust. You know, if you try to take that and do it all in one heat, things are gonna get wild. So now what I'm doing here is I'm just rounding out the wigwag ball to be a nice even wall weight with everything else so that the timber and the wigwag ball have a nice even wall weight when I go to turn them into the disc front of this window drop spoon. Again, back on the roller, just making sure everything's on center. Looks pretty good rolled in the hand there. So now what I'm going to do, again, more, more heat in the larger part that's going to expand more. That wigwag ball is going to kind of fall down in the front into what we call a window drop on the front of the pipe. You can see there it's starting to get, get to be all one big ball. But still I haven't gone for the, the finished shape. Just another step to get closer. a little heat to the back and I'm going to use gravity and I'm just going to flatten the back of this so it looks a little more like a disc. So you can see there I've kind of flattened the back of the ball towards the handle. Back to the roller, straighten everything out. Oh, that little cough <laughs> looks like it set me off a little but no biggie. So here I'm going to flatten the front of the disc, similar to how I flatten the back. 
again on these spoon pipes you don't want to go to a really skinny disc where you can't push the bowl in there so that looks about right i got enough room to plop a bowl down in the center there and it still has some funky shape to it here's the spiral wag that i pre-prepped pattern called tree frog. Worked pretty good. This was actually a testing video of me testing the new timber and the new tree frog together with some cane. Everything worked really well. So here I'm just using the smith torch to pop a hole for the bowl. Heat it up and then I pop it in the flame. You can see there it popped. And then I'm just widening it widening it just a touch because as you heat this for the bowl push that hole is going to want to close just a touch so you start with the hole just a little bigger than you intend on it being because right here when you're adding the heat it wants to shrink back together and close up so you know a couple puffs of air here and there a little test wasn't quite hot enough you don't always hit it first try sometimes you got to go back it's part of it so here I'm puffing a little air while I'm pushing the bowl it brings the sides up gives the bowl a nice little funky look with some you know more swagger we'll say it's important to go back in with the smith torch and scrub out all your chill marks when you go in there and push that you're gonna get chill marks on the inside of your bowl go and scrub them out finalize that hole with a little piece of graphite there now i'm gonna flatten the bottom as you can see i'm hinging off of the mouthpiece off the corner of the graphite and then again just scrubbing out some chill marks that would be there from using the graphite to flatten it. Alright, next up we got the rainbow cane horn. So like I did in the first video, I'm going to add a moil to the other side. Again, a moil is just a little glass that is sacrificial. So I can work just the color between those two little clear moils. ready to move in there and then as I start spinning I add more heat into the tapered side and then right at the end here I'm gonna use gravity and I got all that heat built in and kind of stretch it on down rip it off switch sides here so I can attach the fatter part to the spoon you can see I got that little moil there that I'm going to remove and I'm going to pick and roll it right back to the color like it was never there. All right. So ideally you're going to get a one stick here which means your heats were really good. This one went pretty well you know I'm trying to get it in the camera view wiggling it around but pretty good one stick there. torch go around and clean it up I was waving it around for the camera just want to be, be sure that it's got a nice smoothed out seal there no acute angles for cracking no haze from being moved cold so what I'm doing here is I'm just using a real reducing flame to kind of shape this horn so now I'm going to add
grabbing it and forcing it with the tweezers. You know, you gotta do a little couple couple little moves with the tweezers to get it to conform to the shape, but there's kind of the finished vibe. mouthpiece open. The most important part of this is focusing your heat in only the glass you want to remove. There I am with the pencil reamer again just solidifying the roundness of that hole and that was the assembly on the spoon pipe with the horn little blown out carb. Thanks for watching. <laughs> 